Good morning, traders. Welcome to the final day of the week. Privateer FX here, giving you the Asian preview and the North American wrap. Got a little different look here today. Um, let me move some things around here. I'm a Bloomberg user and uh, also a TradingView user. And uh, I just thought I would introduce you. For me, it's just easier. I have uh, fewer screens, so for me, it's a little bit easier to um, get through all my charts. So I'm going to go today with the um, with Bloomberg. So here you go. This is what the charts look like. I'm sure some of you that follow us are Bloomberg users. So I have my quote screen here, and I've got uh, with all my currencies, and then I've got uh, my the marijuana pot stocks down here. So pretty much the same thing. So let's just go through uh, some of the um, you know kind of what's gone on today. So we had the ECB today. Uh, they did revise, lower their growth forecast, and um, but you know they were not. I wouldn't say they were dovish. They're reducing purchases kind of as planned. And they kept their CPI, their inflation forecasts the same. The Euro rally, uh, a lot of people are blaming this Euro rally on the, um, we look at the, take a look at the hourly, just break it down here. But um, they're blaming on the, the, weaker U.S. CPI. We have U.S. retail sales tomorrow as well. Um, so you can see we had a big spike here right at the, uh, right around the time Draghi was speaking and the time that the U.S. CPI came out. So we had a bit of, bit of uh, dollar weakness against the euro, against the British pound. The British pound was more of um, a, is that working? Yes. Okay, good. British pound was more of a, um, positive Brexit news. You see a lot of numbers up here. This is the Tom DeMarc studies. They actually have this on TradingView as well. Um, you can get this for free. Uh, I don't use it on TradingView, uh, but there are some, you know, feel free to Google it and read about it. And uh, it's kind of a, it's a timing tool. So I'll give you an example here. This is a red 13. This is an overbought condition. Uh, when you get these red 13s and these green 9s, they tend, the market tends to, in this case, top out because it's above the bar and or trade and it top out or trade sideways, looking for kind of a mean reverting type move. It's, you know, cable had a pretty powerful move. You can see how, if you look back here, we had this green 9, and then we had a big down bar. This was news related, but, you know, you can see that it, you know, it did drop and, consolidated before it started going higher. Um, so it's just a timing tool that we like to look at. We, you know, certainly are not going to um, rely only on the Tom DeMarc studies. However, they, they've proven to be pretty good. But, you know, we like to we like to use it when we're, uh, when we're in a position or wanting to enter a position. And instead of fading when you feel like, you know, fading a rally when you've because you think it's overdone. This helps us with some of the timing. Um, so anyhow, well, I'll give you an example. Uh, so we're on a green six. This can go, this should probably go to nine. We should get a green nine. So there's another few days of top side. I don't see why we can't go up to 132 in cable. You know, we expressed some uh, bullish currency views against the dollar earlier in the week, starting with Kiwi. I will... Um, you know, here's here's zero. We got a daily trend line coming up here. This kind of looks like it's got room. I wouldn't be surprised if this, this area breaks tomorrow. If we get a weak retail sales out of the U.S., um, they seem to be punishing the U.S. anytime there's a, a data miss. Um, but let's take a look here at Kiwi. Kiwi had some business manufacturing number came out better than expected. I don't know how important that is. 
we have some uh, before we get into the go back to the charts. We have some we have Swedish CPI. We've got uh, Norway Norges Bank Governor Nicholson speaking in Oslo, and then we have U.S. retail sales is the highlight tomorrow, along with the Michigan sentiment and Rosengren is Fed's Rosengren is speaking. Um, so you know we could get, we could get a little bit of action. I, I think that the market is still long some dollars, probably at not great levels and uh, positions a bit, um, you know, a bit bit long. And I feel like you could see some more more downside in the dollar. Uh, this started on uh, we talked about this back on um, this was Tuesday. Uh, what day was this? Yeah, we're Friday now. Okay, so this is uh, this is Tuesday's bar. We had this perfect doji day in Kiwi, as you can see. We also had this green nine, meaning it's time for a pause. The downtrend, which has been, you know, very steep downtrend, um, is due for a pause, and you know, even you can even play it as a rally. You can see how today uh, in North America we traded up to the the third fib of this recent swing. So this is kind of the 67.30 to 65.01. Um, you know, this is a good place for it to kind of pause. And, the you know, the Kiwi barely closed higher on the day. It's a little bit higher. Um, I don't. I, I like waiting until about here. We're going to – the longs that we put on um, on that doji day on, uh, on the 11th, um, I was looking to get out of some of this – uh, right around this half Fibo, and if you see a, a weak retail tomorrow out of the U.S., I don't see why it could probably go all the way up here, and then I would probably just kind of shut things down. Even though it's a, uh, this might be the start of a, a kind of a new uptrend, but I don't want to um, overstay my welcome. You know, these are these are definitely shorter term trades. They're they're one week and under. Trades. Here's Dollar Canada. Um, you can see here we got a red 13. We got down pretty close. I just missed a buy. We're, we're been short some Dollar Canada and got lucky with positive NAFTA news. And we sold a break of 131.10 the other day when it, it dropped pretty sharply on uh, on the 11th as well. This is kind of the start of the dollar weakness. And I've been bidding now. This is interesting. We got a doji day um, in the New York set, you know, in, uh, on Thursday. So maybe we've just missed this three quarter Fibo of this recent swing. Uh, you could argue, I guess if there, you know, this, this is such a headline game with NAFTA. Um, I've hedged up some downside, some of my downside just in case. Um, let's take a look through some of the other currencies. This is going on a little bit longer than we need to, but it is the end of the week. And, uh, the market looks pretty quiet here in Asia, so you can listen up for a bit longer than normal. Uh, dollar, dollar Swiss, nothing much. Dollar Yen, just monster bid all day. Very, um, very strange. I don't know if this is a yield play. This could be M&A activity, but we're certainly, there's huge offers here at um, like 112.05 to 10. Um, this is getting a little long in the tooth. I'd like to see a test of 112.38. We probably should get it. It is Friday. Uh, I suspect we'll make a, a new, you know, we've made the new high for the week today. I wouldn't be surprised if we get up here. I'll be looking to fade it up here small. Um, what else? Cross yen. Let's take a look at euro yen. Oh, it's kiwi yen. Euro yen, I sold today. At 130.70 ish, um, and it's gone up. It's gone straight up. But what do we have close? Again, we have the Demarc signals. You can see here. Let's just go back, just to give you an idea. Here's a green nine. So this is topping. This is a sell or mean reversion. It's gone too far, too fast. Let me just scrunch this up a little bit and go back to a couple of them. So here's a green nine here. That day we took that out. We took out this low. Looked like it was going to collapse. Closed kind of here. 
and then we had this up bar kind of this engulfing type bar and it ran straight up from you know called the close here 126.17 and it went right up I mean there was only one red bar all the way up to this next nine count um, again go to Wikipedia go to Google whatever you can study the rules I'm not gonna get into it here um, and we had this nine count if you sold it here at 130.75 on the close that yielded some decent amount of pips. I mean, it got all the way down to 128.32. And, you know, risk management, you can cover some and trail the stop and whatever other indicators you look at. But what's interesting is we have the 200 day moving average here at 131.13. That's 20 points from here. Um, so I'm looking at that to potentially uh, sell that overnight. Let's take a look at the minis, get into the stocks. You know, big, big day, <clears throat> big up day, big risk on day. Uh, here we had a nine and a 13. So this is kind of a sell signal up in this zone. We did get the pullback and now we're coming back up. So watch this, this area here now, if we break, this will be new highs. If we break 129.18, 25, that looks like it, you know, it's got a lot of room to the top side. And I'm not touching here because the count is on a f f green four and a red six. That's to me, that's no man's land. So I'm not not even getting involved. The nice thing about the DeMarc studies is they keep you out of trades that um, otherwise you you may get into, and it just helps with the timing. Um, and that's the most. That, that's kind of the the, the biggest uh, um, you know added edge for me. Here's the NASDAQ. We had 913 up in here. We had a nice sell off. <clears throat> right back up. Tech stocks have been on, you know, relatively a bit weaker. Now let's take a look at some of these weed stocks. Um, let's go to, well, here we go, weed.com. Let's see what that chart looks like. Um, so this is the, this is Canopy Growth, who's kind of the poster child and you know did quite well i think we talked about this this is when uh consolation brands came in you gapped up and it's had a nice run up from about you know 35 40 bucks got up to a high of 74.50 um but the main one <clears throat> and the reason why this one is outperformed massively is because tilray and they have had some good news they've had some positive news out of late so i, I will not completely discount that um, they went public back in July at you know sub scrunch this up a little bit I think it was 18 bucks 17 bucks 70 bucks did the sideways thing um, the August what was the August 15th this was the news from um, Constellation Brands with uh, investing in Canopy didn't do much and it started getting some legs and now it's just gone parabolic and what has happened here is because Tilray is listed in New York this there's a lot of the retail let me just call them uh, less sophisticated investors um, have been chasing this thing higher and they can trade it the volumes are massive look at the look at the volume here I actually have it uh, 21 million shares. The average daily volume was probably a few hundred thousand a couple weeks ago. This has gone completely parabolic and uh, this is unsustainable. So I own some puts on this and uh, it's not really working. However, let me pull this up here because there was some news out after the equity close and See if I can get Bloomberg quote. Um, so you can see here, this is Tilray. You can see it's you know it's trading here after hours. It I think it got down to about one hundred and four dollars. So close of one nineteen seventy six. Dropped about 104 on some crazy, let me pull up my Twitter, 
my other page here. There was some news that uh, coming out of the border control that let me see if I can find it. Oh, I'll find it in a minute, but it was some negative news saying that anyone investing in any Canadians investing in uh, U.S. weed stocks and blah blah blah, they're gonna they're gonna there'll be a travel ban, and uh, it sounds like a bunch of bullshit. But um, I'm just trying to find where that news came out. Uh, Canaccord, who's a big uh, brokerage shop out of Canada as well said it's time to sell pot stocks uh, short-term momentum is weakening but if you look here uh, at the board so XLRP and just go down here all these stocks were down so it's five percent nine percent GTI which is Chicago based which we're familiar with this company we're pretty pretty close to these guys down 10 uh, Canopy Growth, you know, one of the high flyers, down 14. Um, GWPH, Kronos. But look at Tilray. Tilray is crazy. So tomorrow, so we've got the, the we've got the pink 13 here, which is a sell signal, or at least it's time to uh, take profit on your longs. You don't necessarily have to go short, but you can use your other indicators to decide. Um, this could be interesting because you've got, if we do indeed close, uh, open lower, you're going to have this daily bar right here, and that'll be called a an island top, which is about a, the mo one of the more bearish indicators. So I'm expecting this thing to, it's got to retrace. I think we'd probably get back down to, you know, 75, 80 in short order because it's completely overdone. Again, the reason why Tilray and Kronos are, uh, have done so well is because the retail uh, community is able to buy these stocks in the U.S., whereas a lot of these retail investors are not able to invest in Canada. So what's happened here is the the Canadian stocks that are listed in the U.S. are outperforming the Canadian stocks that are listed in Canada. It's just a, it's a, it's kind of a um, exchange arbitrage, if you will. Um, but this is completely parabolic. The rate of change is crazy, and um, this will correct. And um, you know, I think I think the story is good. They've had good good news about selling to Germany, and there's all sorts of good news coming out. And big believers in the space, like we said, you know, when we started covering this stock these stocks. Um, anyhow, that's enough for me. Have a great weekend. You'll hear from me on your open on Monday, and I suspect there's going to be uh, plenty of things to talk about. Uh, might be more weed space than currencies, but either way. Uh, good luck. Cheers.